from the Amplified Version of the Bible. All right, as you're turning, we'll go ahead and pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word today with your precious people. I pray you think through my mind, speak through my mouth, that those who are here will be touched, edified, strengthened, and set free. We pray uh, that knowledge flow freely in this place. Lord, help us, Lord, to not hear uh, a word from a person, but help us to hear a word from you so we can apply your word and the principles that are in your word to our lives. We make a bold declaration that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so for those of you who don't know, men, I give you a heads up. You know, uh, uh, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, you know. I, I have a, a notification on my phone, so I won't forget all these holidays and birthdays. Uh, but I said, oh, tomorrow is, is that day. And so it's a day of love. And so we want to pause a little bit. We were talking uh, about uh, having no fear. We'll pause just for a second to talk about love and how important it is in all of our lives. So once again, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We're reading uh, from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Let everything you do be done in love. Okay, motivated and inspired by God's love for us. Let me read that again. Let everything you do, everything you do, be done in love, motivated and inspired by God's love for us. I love that because how many of you know God has set the ultimate example by displaying his love for us, and therefore we have to follow that example, express love toward others. You know, back in 1965, uh, there was a song written. I love the lyrics, and the title was, What the World Needs Now is Love. Anybody have heard of that song? I love it. This is what the lyrics uh, say. It says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. How true are those words? It goes on to say, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. How I many of you know we all need love? <laughs> Amen. We all do. And thank God we can receive that love primarily from Almighty God, but also we can receive it from others as well. Paul, he, he reiterated this point, and he uh, emphasized that love needs to be a priority in all of our lives. And so that's what our goal is today. We want to explore and discover how important love is for all of us. Now, let's look at this word love. Love is defined as an act of caring and giving to someone else. Love is a selfless act. Love also is having someone's best interest and well-being as a priority in your life. Now, that speaks volumes. And so when I think about my life, I've learned uh, through so many experiences uh, about how important love is. And obviously, I'm still learning to this day. Uh, first of all, I, I learned about love and how important it is by being a recipient of God's love. Because I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ, I received him as my personal savior. So therefore, he gives me his love. In fact, the Bible says that God surrounds us with his love. How many of you know there's no higher form of love than the love we receive from Almighty God, and over the years, my love has grown for Him. Also, I learned about love just by being married. You know, come April, Karen and I will be married 18 years. Praise the Lord! And over 18 years, you do learn a few things about love, and, and and giving her the love and the respect that she deserves. Also, being a father, I've learned about love, and I've learned about having balance in love. It's a challenge as a parent balancing between caring for your children and disciplining them as well. So I honestly think that my, my worst fear as a parent is my girls not realizing how much we love them. I think that's my, my worst fear. You know how it is as a parent. You discipline them and, and you're angry. You feel a little guilty because you, you always want them to know, you know that... Uh, you care deeply about them. In addition, my family relationships with my parents and siblings. And um, I learned a lot about love by talking to other couples about marriage. Carol and I were, were talking to uh, several couples. Didn't ask for it, but just kind of happened. And I tell you, I learned about love by seeing couples, uh, married couples, work through challenges. And not only that, seeing the pain and the for lack of a better word, trauma that they go through, through relationships. It, it teaches me how important love is. We have to treat people with value and respect, or it can really hurt and harm an individual. And so again, I argue that love is one of the most important things in our lives today. And so what I want to do, and we're going to get out of the way, I want to give you three reasons why I believe love is one of the most important things in life, why it's so important for us as children of God to understand love and also to display love every single day. The first thing I want to stress is that um, love, 
I believe is important because it's the only thing. Somebody say only thing, only thing. Only thing. To me, it's the only thing that truly resonates with people. Amen. It's the only thing. I mean, you know, talk is cheap. Amen. <laughs> but when we display love, that resonates with others. You know, it's not what we say. I don't even know love is an action word. I believe that everyone understands the language of love and the act of caring for others. Love resounds with people. How many of you have ever heard the statement that people don't care what you know until they know how much you care? Now, I'll, I'll just add on to that. People as Christians, hear me now. People don't care if you claim to be saved. People don't care how many, about how many scriptures you can quote. People don't care if you're in the ministry, what title you have behind your name. They can care less whether or not you come to church Sunday after Sunday or week after week. They can care less on whether or not you wear a cross around your neck or you have a Jesus bumper sticker. Whatever the case may be, they want to know that you care. See, they want to know that you have the love of God dwelling on the inside of you. And that's why, as Christians, we have to work at this. Listen, we have to develop a strong love walk. The Bible says we should be abounding in love. How many of you know we have to use the same energy that we display when we're going after our goals, when we're going after our own personal vision, when we're going out to make money? We use that same energy to display the love of God. Get this everywhere we go. Amen. See, because love is the only thing that truly resonates with others. Jesus said it this way. He said, by this, love. Again, not the title behind your name, not how smart you are, not how many degrees you have. He said, it's by love that people will know that you are truly my disciples. Paul says, love is the true and the truest form, the true test of spiritual maturity. And what happens when we display this love, people will recall it. They, it will resonate with them for years to come. Now, that's why so many of us today are saved. That's why... We gave our heart, our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was because of God's unconditional love, and it resonated with us. It spoke to us. It grabbed our attention, and we said, listen, I, I want to serve you. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for loving me in spite of my faults, in spite of my past, despite what I've done wrong. That resonated with us. The fact that God will love us in spite of what we do. Yes. He spoke to us. Yes. And today, we're in the kingdom of God as a result. So let me give you an example. Those on radio may be received well, may not be, we'll see. I had uh, made a decision to not financially support any business or institution that does not value people of color. Now, I believe that even if someone is Hispanic and a business or institution doesn't value you, you should support them. If someone is Asian, in a business or institution doesn't value you because of your race, you shouldn't support them. If you're Caucasian, if you're white, in a business or institution, I don't care if it's a church, okay? Doesn't value you as a person, okay? I don't think you should support them. And I mentioned that one time on social media. I had a former classmate, a white lady, and she said, Byron, what business are you talking about? Now again, I was a little on the defense, but I didn't know why she asked. But what she said next, it, it really resonated with me. She's a white female, and she said, Byron, if you tell me the business, then I won't go there either. I was like, wow. <laughs> I don't even know if she's saved. I don't know if, if, if she's born again. But that, that spoke to me. She said, Byron, I'm a paramedic right now. And when we drive in the EMS, when someone is in danger when they're sick or ill. I don't care what race they are. <laughs> they can be black, white, Hispanic, Amen. Asian. I will do everything in my power to save their life. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's love. And that resonates with people. When you love people despite their past, despite their gender, despite their race, whatever the case may be, when you treat people, let me tell you, that speaks volumes to someone. He said, I work just as hard. He said, Byron, do you not remember back when we were in high school? He said, there was a business that actually treated people funny, and we boycotted them. I completely forgot about that. But when she said, no, just let me know. I won't even go there myself. And so therefore, 
Listen, when we love people, when we really, hear me now, show people that we care. Listen to me. Especially in critical moments in individuals' lives, when we show them that we care, when we show them that we have their back, that we show them that we're there to support them, yeah. let me tell you, they'll never forget it. Amen. Again, it's bigger than me standing up here on Sunday morning. That's why I believe Absolutely. that your job as a Christian is just as important as mine. Yes, sir. My pulpit is here on Sunday morning. Your pulpit is at home. Your pulpit yes, is on the job. Your yes. pulpit is wherever you go. And I'm telling you what resonates with people more than you quote the scriptures, more than you saying that I'm a king's kid, more than you told your Bible, is how you treat them, how you show them love in spite of what their situation may be, in spite of their past, in spite of whether or not they're living in sin, in spite of whether or not they're even saved or not. Listen, they will always remember how you treat them in love. That's why it's so important. It resonates with everyone. It speaks volumes to anyone, despite your background, color, or creed. Love resonates with everybody. That's why love is so important. That's why Jesus said love is the fulfillment of the entire Amen. law. All about how you treat people. Hallelujah. See? It's all about your love walk. Pastor, why is love so important? I believe it's important. Because love, somebody said love, 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 uh -huh. love. It heals and repairs broken relationships. Okay? Broken relationships. Now, we've all been in relationships that were under stress or were broken or were damaged and needed repair. We went through instances where maybe we didn't talk to someone for a while, whatever the case may be. Love, according to the Bible, can bring about healing. It can potentially repair these relationships. Wow, now, how does this work now? You gotta understand that love is seen as, get this now, let me paint a, a clear picture for you. Love is seen as being willing to compromise. It's seen as fairness, equity, forgiveness, listening to others. Somebody say listening, listening. Yes. Listening to others, patience, kindness, Learning, get this, to let things go, Amen. not keeping score, not harboring bitterness yes. or resentment toward other people. Hey, love yes. will even help you deal with difficult people. Anybody have any difficult people in your life? Yes. Praise the Lord. Difficult people at work, difficult people in your family, the black sheep, or whatever yes. the case may be. Hey, your enemies, we all have them, unfortunately. Love will help you deal with these people, whether it's a supervisor, whether it's a co-worker or a subordinate, whatever the person is, somebody who's hard to get along with. God will show you how to love them. God will show you how to deal with them. Yes. God will give you wisdom on how to manage and navigate yourself through that relationship. Love helps you deal with difficult people. Now, you do know the Bible says, Amen. vengeance is mine. I will repay. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. In other words, you don't have to pay anybody back. Yes, Lord. Oh, just thought about a story. You give me a little illustration. So way back in the day. Somebody say back in the day. Back in the day. Back, back, in, the day. back in the day when I was in school. And uh, <laughs> there was a guy getting on my last nerve. I had this little thing. And I think I'm delivered. Well, people just hit me in my head. Yeah, I just couldn't stand it. Now, Carol, she would, just to make sure I'm going to deliver sometimes, she would do it just for fun. She know I can't stand it. Come on. Hit me in my head. I'm like, you know, hit me in my head, talk about mama. Come on. I'm ready to fight. Come on. Go ahead. Come on. One time I was in school, why did somebody have to come hit me in my head? I was like, oh, ahead, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, man. I'm about to lose my scholarship. I'm Go about ahead. to get kicked out of school. Go ahead. I was sitting down at the lunch table. Uh, guys, I grabbed my lunch tray and I was getting ready to Go do ahead. some damage. And then, the bad thing is people already knew I was saved, I was a Christian, I was getting, everybody knew I was born again. Come on. I said, this ain't gonna be a good luck. You know, I can see it now, you know, basketball player lose a scholarship, cracking person over the head. And I was so angry, and on top of that, I knew I can take him. You know, I didn't really need a tray. <laughs> I was like, I can take him. Come on. So I didn't retire. I was angry. I, I went I went home and I said, God, we have to deal with him. I said, because Lord, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get kicked out of school. I don't want to lose my scholarship. I was angry, kind of like David when he was venting about his enemies. I was yes. I was frustrated. Yes. I said, God, you gotta deal with this situation. Yes. I said, because if I handle it, it's not gonna be pretty. Yes. Over the process of time, what not even a month went by. I noticed I didn't see this guy around campus. I'd asked someone. I said, what happened to so-and-so? He said, didn't you hear? I said, no, what? Oh, man, his parents pulled him out of school. I said, you mean he's gone? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to look. He said, yeah, he was acting up. His parents brought him. He said, he, he's gone. They pulled, him, they, they pulled him out of school. Sent him home. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you know, God can be with people a lot better than you. Yes, sir. Amen. And so, therefore, that's, that's why, because we all have difficult people in our lives. Amen. Okay? But... You don't want to lose your Christian witness. 
You don't want to pull you into a situation, be pulled into a situation where you act out of character. Yes. And so therefore, that's where the love of God comes into play because it helps to heal and repair broken relationships. It helps you to manage and navigate through difficult relationships. Pastor, give me a scripture reference. I'm so glad you asked. How many of you remember the story with the prodigal son? The Bible says Amen. that that relationship was damaged. Yes. He got his inheritance early. He spent all everything. He spent it on riotous living. He left his father, broke his father's heart over the choices and the decisions that he made. Ever been there, parents? Praise the Lord. And he came back. And he said, Dad, when you receive me, I'm no longer worth to be called your son. And before he reminded him of what he did wrong, the Bible says his father received him with open arms, loved him back to holiness. How many of you know our relationship with Almighty God was damaged through sin? And the Bible says Jesus loved us back to holiness yeah. so we can have a relationship with Almighty God. So that's what love does. See, love it can heal. Somebody say heal, heal. Yeah, yeah. And repair a broken relationship because love is spiritual. It's supernatural. This is the God kind of love. I'm not talking about sexual love. I'm not talking about infatuation or, or, or lust. I'm talking about the highest form, agape love. This is something that happens. And every time we walk in love, something supernatural, something dynamic happens. God gets involved. His word begins to go into work. Are you with me? For our lives, in our situation, in our relationships, praise the Lord. That's how yeah. it happens. So love can help and heal and repair broken relationships. Now I say this, and, and, and I'm not, this is critical, and, and, and of course I know it takes two. But there's something the pastor said years ago, and I, at first I thought it was a little insensitive, but um, I understand where he came from. And he said, you know what, if, if we really have people to walk in the love of God, he said, now keep in mind, when it comes to marriage, I understand it takes two. Okay, yeah. got to have both. Okay. He said, if people really walk in the love of God, there'd be no divorce. He said, there won't be any. If both, somebody say both, both, both. Oh. Let's be fair about this now, <laughs> all right? Okay, because you could be a, 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 a spirit-filled woman and have a, a messed-up man. Or you could have, be a spirit-filled man and a messed-up woman. Okay, so I, 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 listen, I'm not being critical, but he said, if, if we really walked in God's love, he said, there wouldn't even be a divorce. And so, therefore, that's why love is important. It heals Broken relationships. Now, in terms of healing broken relationships, love, I need to say this now, it does not mean that you're an enabler. It does not mean you're a doormat. It does not mean you're a pushover. It does not mean you allow people to run you over. It does not mean that you don't hold people accountable for their actions, okay? It does not mean you don't speak your mind. It does not mean you don't stand up for yourself. It's amazing. You know, sometimes talking to other couples, usually there's one person who's dominant in the relationship, one person who, who's alpha, or there, there's one person who is, is the controller, and the other person is passive. And so, therefore, no, if you pass it, you get run over. No, it doesn't mean you pass it. You let people just push uh, you down and, and do anything they, they want to do. No, love sometimes confronts as well. And so it does not mean that you don't stand up for yourself, but love in its truest form will heal broken relationships. Amen. Even in our nation right now, you know the solution for, for racism and classism is the love of God. It'll Amen. heal. It'll heal broken relationships. There's a man of God. I shared a story a while ago. And uh, he went through a, a difficult custody battle with his son. And they didn't really have the best relationship. And I understand everything. I'm, I'm speaking in a vacuum. Keep in mind that every situation is different. You deal with them on a case-by-case -case scenario. But he talked to God about it. How many of you know when you're dealing with challenges in relationships, at home, on the job, or with your children, we need to talk to God about it. Amen. That's the benefit we have. See, we can talk to God. God will talk to us. God will give us wisdom. His word will give us wisdom as well. And he said he wanted to help repair the relationship he had with his son. And he said the Lord spoke to him. And he said, what I want you to do here is I want you, again, essentially was telling him to show him love. I want you to give him two hours of non-judgmental time every single day. He said, two hours, don't talk about it. His hair, don't talk about, you know, his friends. <laughs> don't talk about them playing video games all the time. Don't talk. He said, give him two hours. Somebody said two hours. Two hours. Two hours, two hours of non-judgmental time every day, at least when he had him in custody. He says, uh, and week two, they were best friends. I mean, no, that's something that the love of God can potentially do. And that's why love is so very important. It's important because it will heal broken relationships. And as we said, it's important because it resonates with people. Again, the Bible says, let everything be done in love, motivated and inspired by God's love 
in us. So again, why is it important, Pastor? Love resonates with everybody. Love will help repair and heal broken relationships. And also, love is important because God is love, which makes God important. He's love. Love gives us a clear picture of what God is like. How many of you know that Jesus is the love of God personified? You see love all throughout his life. I honestly believe if Jesus was here today, that would be the thing that would be probably the biggest takeaway just being in his presence. You would feel so much love. Because the Bible says that's how God sits. That's how he is. You see it in the life of Jesus. He always was compassionate. He always was patient. He always was there to meet the needs of the people. The Bible says, in addition, that he made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. He always was displaying his love. God's love means that God is caring. He's just. He's merciful. He's patient. He's compassionate. He's genuine. He's generous. Paul prayed in the epistles that we would understand the, the depth of God's love. We can comprehend how much God loves us. I don't believe you could have low self-esteem. You could be depressed if you really understand how much God is for you and how much he cares for you. Again, the Bible says God surrounds us daily by his love. You can see this. You get a snapshot of this in the Old Testament on how God dealt with the children of Israel. The Bible said that they played the harlot. They went after other gods. Yet the Bible said God still loved them. The Bible literally said he sent a prophet to them and said to them, I'm married to the backslider. I'm married to you. Even though you're unfaithful, even though you're trying to worship and serve other idol gods, I'm still there for you. Yes, the Bible said he was angry at their actions, but it did not have anything to do with how he felt about them as an individual. He loved them and so did with our lives as well. It is absolutely amazing how Jesus was able to deal with even his enemies, those who were demon-possessed, those who were trying to use him, those who were trying to betray him. He was able to deal with their uh, 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 attention, deal with their action rather, deal with the spirit motivating them, but still yet love the person. Amen. Man, could we, if we ever got to the point where we can do that and just deal with a person's behavior but love them individually. That's what Jesus did. He was the love of God personified. And if God was like that, what do you think we ought to be like? Amen. Amen. <laughs> because we're his children. So the Bible says God is love. There, there are times where just, you know, especially during praise and worship or I'm, I'm driving to work and I'm, I'm worshiping God. And, and sometimes I just think about the love of God. It, it overwhelms me with emotion. The thought that God has been so faithful, so just, so kind, even when I did not deserve it. God has been so good to us. We say God is good all the time and all the time. God is good even through everything we went through just in the last 12 months. Hey, we're still here. God has been faithful. I cannot lie. Amen. It is an example of God's love. Just think about your life just for a moment. Even back for when you were young, God has been with you this entire time. He's faithful and blessing you over and over again, giving you gainful employment and putting people in your life, opening doors for you that were once closed. That's the demonstration of the love of God. And that's what Jesus personified when he was here on earth. Think about this. The Bible said he went to Golgotha's hill. He came down from the portals of heaven. He took the form of a servant, of a man, and he came to give his life for you, you, and especially you. And the Bible said if he had to do it all over again, he would do it just for one of us. The Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. The Bible said he sacrificed his very life and on the way to doing so, the Bible said he was beaten beyond recognition yes. just for you. Yes, sir. You talk about the love of God. Unconditional love. Even when we sometimes backslide, we walk away from God. Even sometimes when God is the last thing on our mind, sometimes when we don't share our faith, when we don't do what we're supposed to do, when we're not living a life of holiness, when we're not obeying God's word, yes, he still loves us. The Bible says he's a God of second, third, and fourth chances. And really, that really speaks to the depth of God's love. And that's why it's so important. And I'm telling you what the lady said in the song is so true. What the world needs today is love. Amen. It's the only thing that we have too little of. Yes. And I argue, we don't have too little love just in the world. Sometimes we don't have enough love in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go we don't ahead. have enough love in our homes, in our families. We don't have enough love. Are you with me on the job as a nation? As I said before, we really need love. You know, sometimes, you know, during this time of year with thanks, uh, excuse me, with Valentine's Day, we, we, we recall and think about, you know, doing things special for our loved ones. But how many of you know for the believer, this ought to be a lifestyle? Now, you don't have to be have a significant other or be married to just demonstrate love. And praise the Lord, if you are around people, if you are in a home, if you are around individuals at any point, how many of you know we get a whole lot of practice? I'm working yeah. on our love walk. Praise yes, the Lord. Yes. 
That's what we have to do. Yes, sir. The Bible says we should be growing in love. That's why love is so very important. Yeah. You know, I talked about the man of God who just passed away. And um, I always was drawn to messages about faith. He talked about that a whole lot. And I had mentioned this previously. The thing that really resonated with me the most was, um, you know, how he was toward people. How he treated his family. You know, what his wife, what his children said about him, you know. And um, that was profound to me because that's where the real work comes in. This isn't real work, okay, per se. Now, with a little bit of practice, anybody can do this. But think about this now. I'm up here an hour a week, you know, two hours a week, including Bible study. Amen. All right? We get 24 hours in a day. The real work is, now this is work, yeah, but, but it's only for an hour. The real work is when I step down from this pulpit. The real work Amen. is on my way home. Amen. The, the real work Go is when I got my kids and I'm like, oh, telling Carol, when are you going to come back home? The real work is on the job when you got people getting on your last nerve. Yeah. The real work is when you come to church and you sit in someone's row of their seat yeah. and they look, give you the nasty look. The real work is when someone says something to you that's insensitive, mean, or just ugly. That's where the real yes. work comes in. This is for an hour a week, two hours a week. Yes. Yeah, Jesus said this is how people will know that you really belong to me. How you love one another. Again, people don't care what you know until they know you care. Amen. People don't care how educated you are, how much money you make, or what title you have behind your name, your position in society. They can care less until they know how much you care for them. Amen. And that's why love is so important. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that we should put on love every single day. Just kind of like you put on you know, things before you leave the house. Is that important? God told us to put it on. Again, treating people the right way. And I thought about it, it's kind of like now we're in the middle of a pandemic. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You ever leave the house and then you forgot your mask? Like, oh, yeah. shucks. Man, I got to turn around. Like, I can't even go in the grocery store without it. Give me the snake eye. I'm like, forgot my mask. It's, it's kind of like people used to smoke cigarettes. Like, where my, where my light at? Where my, where my light at? So I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Like, where, where my mask? That's, and then now I got two girls like, oh, we're halfway where we need to go. Like, I forgot my mask. I'm like, oh, my God. You know? And it's, it's so important that you know you have to have it now because you cannot receive good services. You can't go into certain places of, of, of their businesses without it. You have to have it. It's, it's important. Like, you literally going to have to turn around in order to get it. Yes, sir. Got to have it with you. And let me tell you what, love is that important, too. You, you have to have it with you. You have to make sure you put it on every single day. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, if we don't, you will profess to be a Christian and then act out of character. Amen. So we have to practice this on a daily basis. We have to put on love. We have to demonstrate it. We have to realize how important it is. And what better time to do so than a time like right now. We have to show people the love of God. What verse if you want to pray? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, I knew I wasn't going to preach today. I was going to more so teach and share. But uh, we want to pray. Hallelujah. Bless his name. <clears throat> I... Uh, talked to a young lady and uh, who we met, Carol and I, 